come from a little different industry than pure pharma uh, from a life science industry. Uh, genetics uh, for the last 27 years has been providing uh, product and services to um, life science research industry uh, and also um, biopharma companies trying to develop new molecules and scale them to production therapeutics. Um, almost 25, 27 years ago, um, when I started the business, uh, no one thought, no one actually knew what life sciences was uh, or molecular and biology was. And everyone thought that uh, I was just crazy. Yes, uh, as someone said this morning, entrepreneurs are crazy, stupid, and got to have balls, you know. So that's how I cashed on an opportunity. I realized uh, that um, while working for a smaller company, I used to meet a lot of customers, and there was a huge gap between product and services being provided to customers. I really looked at it at that time. Major part of the research, I would say, almost every part of the research was happening only in the government sector, government-funded research centers. And from, for them to source products uh, from overseas in this life science space research was almost three to six months process. This was a huge opportunity that I saw. Uh, people didn't trust uh, companies like us or small entrepreneurs who came and said we could offer you that. I must tell you a story that um, in my very early days of business, uh, when I came to your city of Bombay from Delhi, you know, the, my biggest challenge was when I used to meet customers, they said, Delhi Wala, I don't want to deal with you. <laughs> that was the trust level, the confidence people from Bombay and Pune had at that time. And I must say that, um, you know, that really, uh, that actually motivated me. I said, no, I have to turn this around. I must say that in a couple of years, all my best customers come from Bombay. <laughs> you know, thanks to the city. Um, so I really cashed on, on the opportunity between the product and services. We bring, brought, built value for our customers single-handedly for first couple of years. Then over the years, as we grew, I must say that genetics has been instrumental, has the credit of bringing almost all life science companies, global companies from the Silicon Valley in the US into India first time, and we have managed to establish them as big brands. Today they exist as 10, 15, 20, 20 billion dollar companies. And those were the companies brought by genetics first time way back in 20, 25 years ago. So over the years, we, every time uh, we have been trying to cash on the opportunity of what the customers really need. Uh, you know, from three to six months process of buying, I brought it down to a month. And then in 1995, 96, when, when the government opened up uh, and relax the rules of importation. We were the first company which set up a warehouse in India. And today we, we warehouse almost 15, 20,000 SKUs starting from minus 80 degrees to ambient temperature products. So we converted people buying from three to six months process down to on a call in 1996. So all along, we have been building value for our customers. We cashed on in 19, late 90s when the pharma sector opened up, the government gave incentives for investing in the R&D. Pharma started investing in the R&D. I shifted part of my focus purely from license research to uh, pharma, uh, providing, working with the pharma or biopharma companies. Today, more than 50% of our business actually comes from companies like biopharma companies who are producing vaccines or therapeutics. So over the years, we have been building value. I must say that in today, we compete with companies, uh, international companies who have come and set up their shops. There are 10, 10, 15, 20 billion dollar companies. Because we have built over the years value for our customers, customers still give us a preference. You know, so in 25 years, we have been able to really build value both in terms of a product and services for our customers. We have the only company which warehouse such huge a number of products. We supply, we have built up a most, uh, you know, um, excellent supply chain, cold chain deliveries across country. In 25 years, we, we could deliver anywhere in India a minus 80 product, which was so difficult doing, I would say, 20 years ago. So, uh, 
I think uh, there are a lot of opportunities. The sector is still very small, I would say, uh, about $1.9 billion. Large part of it still comes from the biopharmaceutical companies. Uh, its diagnostics is still very small. Um, bi Agri-bio is also about 14, 13, 14 percent. And the real biotech per se is just about 3 to 4 percent. So India is not even 1 percent of the global R&D that's spent on, on the biotechnology. Opportunities are huge. Uh, I think there is a lot of what the government still needs to do. Uh, a lot of government has to still make a lot of investments uh, in infrastructure and training manpower. Uh, I think the biggest challenge today going forward for this industry um, I see is that uh, industry-specific trained manpower. Um, you know, uh, we see, we meet all the time, number of students uh, coming out of private in, uh, in universities having done masters in biotechnology. Unfortunately, a um, lot of 90% of them do not know why they got into this industry or why did they choose this area of, of their education. Uh, so they have no uh, aptitude, they have no interest in it, and they land up working with the call centers. So we do not have a right talent available going forward. That's probably the biggest challenge. Uh, lastly, I think, um, I must say that uh, still there are huge opportunities in the area of life science, um, diagnostics, uh, agri-bio uh, are the areas that people can get in invest. Uh, we had a panel before this, the food. Uh, I must say that I see that in next two, three years, uh, the other explosive area is the uh, food testing. A lot of money and investment has to go into that. There are no regulatory uh, laws available at the moment, but I think a lot of it would happen in, in, in coming years. So that's another area that uh, startups can get into, uh, food testing area. So that's another huge opportunity. And uh, well, lastly, I, would, I, say, I must say that uh, genetic employs almost 125 people. They're all highly educated. We have 15, 20 PhDs who work for us. We give them a lot of opportunity. Um, and uh, I must say that people are also very important. So I have, genetics has been managed to, we, though we compete with large multinationals, but we have managed to retain our uh, best people for the last 20 years. So people are very important for the business. I must thank them for that. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Arun. Arun, can you talk about what is the level of R&D happening in medical biotech in India? Or it, it is, is it largely public institutions or, or the company? They're largely public institutions. And I'm, you know, I don't want to say on this platform, I'm a bit disappointed in the last 20 years what has happened in this area. Um, not many companies or entrepreneurs have come and invested into innovation. We still depend on bringing cheaper products from other sources in the Far East or... Uh, so we are still largely importing it. Very basic diagnostics are being manufactured here, but a uh, large part of it in the healthcare sector is still being imported. So I think innovation is something that uh, we really need to focus on. Huge opportunity for making India here. Yeah. Okay. So for any entrepreneur, uh, especially in the SME, uh, I think you need to have a lot of stomach to stay on, um, you have to fight the system uh, and uh, build your business. I have done that in 20 years from 170 rupees to 125 crore company. Good. Good.